Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York. And um, today I wanted to do a video on the subject of valvular AF, in particular uh, in relation to uh, a class of drug called the NOAX. Okay, so um, uh, let me just talk you through this. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I happen to be on one of the forums and I saw someone ask this question. Um, Atrial fibrillation is a condition where the heart beats irregularly, either intermittently or persistently. And when the heart beats irregularly, it doesn't pump out as much blood as it should when it beats regularly. And therefore, there is some blood which would ordinarily get moved because it gets pumped out, which doesn't get pumped out because the heart is beating irregularly and therefore less effectively. If the blood does not get moved out, it can stagnate and form a blood clot. And there is a likelihood that that blood clot can get dislodged and go to the brain. And therefore, for most people with atrial fibrillation, uh, uh, it is recommended that they go on medications known as anticoagulants. These are also called by some people um, and these are also referred to by some people as blood thinning medications, although they don't necessarily thin your blood, but they stop it from thickening abnormally, all right, i.e. clotting. Um, so when people are told they have atrial fibrillation, the immediate thing is, oh, you need to go on some anticoagulants, uh, because if your blood, uh, if we can stop your blood from clotting, uh, then you will not form a clot in your heart and that clot will not go get dislodged and cause a stroke. Uh, so most of the times the agent that is mentioned is warfarin, but warfarin has lots of disadvantages. It is um, a medication that has to be titrated according to how effective it is uh, with regards to the blood. Uh, so for a lot of people, it can represent a significant inconvenience. They have to go, they have to get their bloods checked regularly. And depending on that, the dose of their warfarin has to be adjusted. Now we are fortunate enough because there is a new class of agent available. These are called the novel or the new or the non-vitamin K oral anticoagulants. Okay, the NOAX. And there are a few available. There is something called dibigatran available. There's something called rivaroxaban available. There is something called apixaban available. There's one called edoxaban that's available. And there's another one coming out called etrixaban. Uh, and these are all agents that are effective in stopping the blood from coagulating. So they are effective anticoagulants and they have been used in patients with atrial fibrillation and they've been found to be effective, as effective as warfarin. The advantage with a lot of these agents is, the advantage with these agents is that they don't require regular blood tests to monitor what, how much dose to take because you just take them like you take any other tablet and you just expect them to work. And how do you know they're working? Well, we know from large studies that they seem to be as effective as warfarin in terms of preventing strokes. The second advantage with them is that they are associated with a lower risk of spontaneous bleeding, particularly within the brain, compared to warfarin. Um, so a lot of people, for a lot of people, the NOACs represent an amazing new choice of agent to go on rather than go on warfarin. Most people would like to go on to NOAX. One of the problems with the NOAX is that they are licensed for non-valvular AF, uh, which means that if, or which, well, so all the guidelines, all the recommendations are that NOAX can be used as an alternative to warfarin in patients with non-valvular AF. However, there is considerable confusion amongst people as to what constitutes non-valvular AF or what constitutes valvular AF, because in general, people don't recommend them in those patients who have valvular AF. So for most doctors, what valvular AF means is AF that has been caused by a predominant valve problem. And valve problems are common, and because valve um, uh, problems 
result in increased pressure or volume within the heart. They can cause the atrial chambers to enlarge and they often lead to atrial fibrillation. Now, for a lot of people, so they, they for a lot of people, they go to their GP, they say, look, I've got uh, mitral regurgitation or I have aortic stenosis, these are valve problems, and I have atrial fibrillation. And the GP will say, well, they're not licensed for valvular AF, so you can't have them. And I just wanted to put this straight because it is true to say that um, for a lot of people, the atrial fibrillation may have resulted directly as a consequence of the valve. However, for the, for the purpose of using the NOAX, practically, there are only really two types of patients in whom you can't use them. Okay? There is one valve condition called rheumatic mitral stenosis. Okay? And this condition is associated with a very, very high risk of clot formation and strokes. And in those people, those people have not been studied adequately. And because of that, most people would say it is you should not use a NOAC in that. And I would agree that you should not use a NOAC in patients who have rheumatic mitral stenosis because the stroke risk is so much higher and they are not a group that has been studied adequately in any of the studies. So, but apart from that, if you have mitral regurgitation causing your atrial fibrillation, if you have aortic stenosis causing your atrial fibrillation, if you have aortic regurgitation, most clinicians, most cardiologists would be okay using a NOAC in those settings. However, most cardiologists would be very, very apprehensive about using NOACs as an alternative to those patients who have rheumatic mitral stenosis. So that is one condition in which you shouldn't use a NOAC, okay? But other valve problems, you can use NOACs in. The other condition in which you shouldn't use a NOAC as an alternative to warfarin are those patients who have artificial heart valves. By artificial heart valves, I mean metal heart valves, okay? Now, the thing with the metal heart valves is that there has been a study which has compared dibigatran, which is uh, one of the NOACs, with warfarin in patients who have artificial heart, heart valves. And in that study, and it was called the realign trial, realign trial, there was a finding that study had to be stopped early because there were greater bleeding complications and more clotting complications in the patients who were taking the dibigatran compared to the group that were taking the warfarin. So in patients who have metal heart valves, NOAX would be contraindicated unless new research comes out to prove that they're not. But at this point in time, for me and for the purpose of NOAC use, NOAC prescription, I would consider valvular atrial fibrillation to be either rheumatic mitral stenosis or metallic heart valves. Some people ask about biological heart valves. Some people have artificial valves, which are made out of pig valves, okay? And they say, well, can we use the NOAX in that group? Well, the truth is that patients with pig valves don't require anticoagulation for the valve, all right? So if you don't have any other reason to recommend anticoagulation, most of these patients don't require any anticoagulation. So if a person with a pig valve develops atrial fibrillation, you're anticoagulating them for the atrial fibrillation, you're not anticoagulating them for the valve. In a patient with a metallic valve, you're anticoagulating them for the valve and also for the atrial fibrillation. Patients who have metal valves require anticoagulation regardless of whether they have atrial fibrillation or not. Patients with biological valves, pig valves, um, homografts, they require anticoagulation only if they have a condition like atrial fibrillation. They would not require anticoagulation just for the valve. So in that group of patients, you can use NOACs. However, I would always recommend that it is important that you have a detailed discussion with a cardiologist uh, before making that decision. Okay, if you have um, any other issues with NOACs, any questions, I'm going to put out 
many more videos in the near future on the subject of NOAC. So I hope to answer them then. If you want to ask me any questions, please don't hesitate. Drop me a line. Uh, this is my website. Um, and this is me. Okay. And I also have a Facebook page, which is this. Excellent. So I really appreciate all the great feedback I get. And I'm sorry I haven't had the time to do uh, more videos. Um, and I also wanted to thank everyone because a very, very special part of the York cardiology uh, business was not feeling very well recently. And now she is. And I wanted you to meet her. So I will ask her to come here. Bluebell, come here. And that's why you can hear all this panting because young Bluebell, who wasn't feeling very well, is feeling a lot better now. So this is Bluebell, uh, who's my partner in crime. The best thing about it, best thing about your cardiology, head of security, head of marketing, the boss, the head honcho. So I love her very much and I'm delighted she's feeling better. And I just wanted to say thank you to all those people who said such nice things and who wished her well when she was unwell. So all the best and take care.